we are going to build a multi-scheme password hashing from scratch. And our second scheme will be with Argon2. We'll do it with dynamic dispatch first, and then with a couple of lines of code, turn it into a fast static dispatch. And best of all, it will be from scratch, but in the context of our production code. So first, what is a multi-scheme password hashing? Let's say that we hashed our password with HashMac 512. And then our corporate security team comes and tells us that we need to use another hash algorithm like Argon2 and or that we need to change our hash secret. Obviously, we do not want to invalidate all of the passwords, so we still want to validate the old ones and then upgrade the users to the new scheme as they log in. Now, the good news is, if you remember in the first episode, we put this little identifier in our hash password for the first scheme, even if we didn't have the multi-scheme infrastructure ready. So now, we just need to implement the multi-scheme logic and routing so that we can validate the old password with the HashMac 512 and then upgrade it to the new one, which will be the Argon2. So that is the goal of a multi-scheme password hashing. Okay, so what we're going to do in this first chapter is we're going to refactor our PWD module and we're going to actually rename this one PWD Legacy and then create a new one. And the reason why is we don't want to refactor that in place because otherwise it's going to break things all over. So for that, we're just going to go to our lib. It's exactly what I put in the latest little video. We're going to do PWD Legacy. So we are renaming this module. We click OK, press Command, Control, Save to save all of the files. And then you might need to do a reload. So now the cool thing is all our code is going to work on this one and we can start a new clean one like that, the mod WD, and that will be where we're going to put our magic. And whatever we do there, we'll be able to do our unit test and so on, and then we'll be able to swap it with a final replace. Okay, so let's go to our file now. So first we're going to create our section here, which is going to be the modules. That is our best practice. We are going to uh, have our mod error. So the thing I like to do is for the token and the password, they have their own errors. So it's important that the key modules, that's my strategy, has their own errors. The crates, the lib crate doesn't have to have an error. So PW and token in a way are kind of independent. So we don't need to bubble up into the crates. That's not necessary. And then the other modules that use those then can wrap these errors. So we're going to create that and we're creating a file. We're going to go there. I have a little snippet that you can find on the Rust 10x site. Let's just do that. Only thing that we use is CLIs. And eventually I like the from as well. We'll add that later. So that will be for Saturday. And then again, here our strategy is we don't use this error. We don't need it. And because anyway, it's going to be serialized via Saturday. So the debug display is plenty enough. So we're going to have that. And I like to have my errors very early on. And then I do this. And then on top here, I have a, another one here, which is going to re-export our error and result. So like this, we can have PW colon error, PW colon result. And once we press save, this is going to be gone because now we are using the error. Okay, so next one is going to be our types. So I'd like to put it under types. And it's going to be what we had before. That is actually a good model that we want. So content to hash is what we want to hash. The content is in clear. And the sort, we're using UID. It's a good practice. So that is good. We're going to obviously import it. And now I'm putting a space here. The reason why I'm putting a space, I'm sorry, I have a CD. It's because I like to have my re-export separated from my imports. If I put it there, it's going to mess it up. So that depends on how you have your VS Code settings. OK, and now we can actually close this one and things will import nicely. So now that we have that and the two public functions that we are going to have, and I'm going to put that public functions. So the first one is this one, the hash and everything. And right now, I'm going to do a big fix me, but I'm going to return OK. 
fix me hash pwd and we're going to see later why it's going to be actually pretty cool and so that the goal of this function is to hash a password so the to hash is a content to hash the type we had above and that inside it will hash the password and return the hash password so that is a goal and then let me close the left side the next function is going to be our validate we're going to put a to do for now and that will take our to hash our content to hash could take a reference and then our password already encrypted with the scheme and everything because we don't need to understand the scheme at this point and then it will return what is called a scheme status that is what is going to tell to our web backend if that password need to be updated to the latest scheme and we're going to see that later it's going to be actually pretty cool but because we haven't implemented our scheme right now i'm going to just put a string and i'm going to return i'm going to do a fix me and i'm going to return fix me and i'm going to do that just a strategy that i have you might have an, another one but the point here is that we want very early on to be able to write our unit test and to do a calco watch on our unit test even if we didn't implement everything and so that will allow us to go very quickly and then at the end we'll have the concrete type and then everything will work fine now there's one thing that i like to do we're going to get a lot of these warnings so that is what i like to do is i go back to my cargo to ml now that we are using that and i'm going to uncomment this one so that will remove the noise and i don't always do that but i do that when i do a major refactor because otherwise the noise distract me and then obviously before the final commit you need to remove that because it's actually very good so now let's go back to our file so now what we're going to do is we're going to have our the privates that would be private types private functions or whatever is needed to do the job so that doesn't bleed out and we'll do that later but right now the things that we're going to have and i have a little snippet over there is our unit test and that is super cool because it's the beginning of everything so i do the test i have another one which is one we don't need to be async simple is better and we are just going to do a test multi scheme okay so that is our methodology again we do okay if we had to do an error we do like this and if we have multiple okays we might have okay with that or some things okay this pro and cons on both sides but basically that is our strategy so what we're going to do is we're going to have our setup and fixtures and our exec and right now we're not going to have the check we're just going to execute and print so that will allow us to have the fast development iteration on the setup we're creating our fx sort so again that is the best practice when i prefix it with fx that is because it's a fixture and then we have our fx content to hash just putting hello world right now we could also put sometime i do that put the text of the function but right now hello world will work fine and then we have our sort which is obviously fx sort and then for the exec we are just going to do the hash password so we are going to hash our fx to hash and then we are going to print it so we just print it like that and then for the validate we are going to validate the same fx to hash and then we are going to validate it against whatever we got there and then we are going to print it that's it and it looks very simple but this is key for fast development because now here's the thing we can do we can bring our terminal up and we're going to have that line which is cargo watch quiet clear execute and then we're going to do a test quiet again p and that is for the crate lib auth and that is a prefix of our function name so here we could test multiple and very important for this phase is to have the dash 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 no capture so by doing that it's going to print it so it's quite a bit of long i have some shell function or whatever that can shorten that a little bit or often i do just a copy paste in my readme or somewhere and then i can just paste them there but then once we have that if we press enter it's going to compile and it's going to run it and now we have our very clean debug print with the best practice that i have the dash 
greater than greater than such as I can find and delete them later and then I have the value over there and here we just did a debug because eventually that will be a struct so like this we won't even have to change it okay so now every time we are going to change this for example press save and it's going to run it again so right now nothing changed because everything is fake okay so now that we have that we're going to actually close the terminal and we're going to go back on top and we're going to go to our module and the first module we're going to create is going to be a mod scheme and so that is where we're going to create our scheme constructs the struct and so on and also the schemes so we're going to create it as a scheme mod.rs and we're going to go into it so on this one we're going to do the same thing so we're going to have our module section and now and the reason why i put an empty space is because if it's not the folding doesn't work there's a bug somewhere it just happens sometimes so this way is safe so i'm going to have the mod error and that will be our famous error files and we can actually do here i have the little snippets that will be good for now now we can go back to this now we're going to also expand that to follow our best practice we know we're going to have to use create pwd content to hash so we can put it there and so this way every time we do the import it will go after that otherwise it get kind of get messed up so now we can close this one and the first thing that we're going to create is our scheme that will be a trait and the goal is to make it a trait object because first we're going to use a dynamic dispatch and then we're going to use enum dispatch to make it a static dispatch so we're going to do a pub trait scheme and then we are going to do a fn hash we need to put a reference of self to make sure that is a trait object and then we're going to have our to hash and that will be our content to hash and that will return a result so it's a result of of the scheme of string and then we have validate take the self to make sure it's a trait object and then we're going to have the same thing to hash and then we have our pw ref and that will return a result of void so it will be an error if it fails and if it passes then it's an okay void it's fine then we're going to need another type and that will be a pub enum and that will be our scheme status and that could be okay so that will mean the password use the latest scheme so all good or we have the outdated and that is the password uses an old scheme so with that information then the code in our login will be able to say oh if it's outdated we need to rehash it such as we take the latest one we're going to make that one derive debug now it's important to note that a scheme which could be our hashmac 512 or argon2 scheme does not know if it's the current one or the outdated one so that enum will be returned by another function that will validate a password and then we'll know the scheme and then we'll tell if the scheme is outdated or not so we're going to see how it works later so now we're going to implement our scheme one and our scheme one is going to be the one that we had in our legacy this one which is the hmac hasher and it's very important because with this multi-scheme model you always want to have the preview scheme or the old schemes such as you make sure you can still validate the password with all schemes and then you can upgrade them to the latest and greatest so obviously we're not going to use password legacy and so we're going to go back to our mod scheme and now here we're going to have a mod scheme 01 and then name them 01 02 03 because it doesn't really matter it's just something from the code you can have any naming convention you want so we're going to create just a single file is enough get into it and that is what we did in the previous episode in episode 01 in the big one so i'm just going to paste the result and this is basically the same import that we have we're creating a pub struct scheme 01 so that we didn't have that before but all the code below is the same so i'm just showing we do a pub struct scheme 01 
And then we are just implementing our trait, which is a trait object for the scheme 01. So we have the hash, the two hash construct. We are getting the config and the password key. And so that is basically a vector for eight. And then we call our hash, which is a hash method that we have below, which is the same one that we have in the legacy. We hash to the new password, and then we compare with the reference one. Now, if we press save on this one, we're going to have these errors here that is not going to work. So we can go back to our errors. And again, the strategy on the errors, that the one that I like, is key modules or sub modules will have their own errors. And then I re-export the result and the error per module, such as we don't have to do colon, colon, error, error, and so on. And so we see that our scheme have its own error over there. And then the PW also has its own error. And if we go to the libcore, it's a little bit the same kind of strategy. The crates doesn't really have its own error, but the key submodules, they have it. And then depending on what they use, they can wrap other errors. And so that works pretty well and keeps the thing very simple and very informative when you want to see the error chain that you have. And best of all, it's kind of frameworkless. And so it's very native to Rust in many ways. So let's go back to our scheme zero one. And so we're going to go to our error. And here I'm going to accelerate a little bit. This is basically all of the errors that we will need. So the first one is we have a key error. So the key cannot be generated or something like that. Or we have a salt error. Eventually we could put more information, but right now those are plenty enough and they don't really happen that often anyway. That is when we have an error related to the hash, when there's a validation error, or that is a scheme not found. And in this case, we're going to store the attempted scheme here. So again, on the other ones, if you want, you can definitely store more information, but this one is a good start. And my strategy is always to start with something, even if there's no more information, and then eventually I can add as I need. So this kind of thing is a judgment call a little bit. So now that we have that, we can go back to our scheme. Zero one to continue to view the code. So that is going to be our implementation of the scheme trait, the validate. And that is below is our kind of code that we already had before. So that is exactly what we had before. We're taking the key and then we're going to do the two hash. Oh, there's one thing as well. If we go back up is how did we get the key here? So, so the thing that I like is to have this function to be effectless. I don't know if it's the right context, but basically takes the key and takes the hash and it has everything in it. It doesn't get outside. Now the hash is getting the password key like we had before from the config. And the practice that I did, I updated the production code, is that now each key modules, not all of them, but key subcrates might have their own configs that are just for that crate. So in this case, everything which is related to auth is inside the config auth. So if we go there and we look, we have the password key, the token key, and the token derivation. So that is everything that this crate needs, and nobody else really needs it. So my convention now is to say, I'm putting that as, as a config. I'm having a unique name to make sure that if I need to compose them somewhere, things work very nicely, and then the function name to get it from the once lock is going to be, again, the prefix, which is auth underscore on the config. So we have that for the core as well. I think we have a config over there. And I think we have that not for the RPC, not for the UTL. So that is important. But then I think there is one for the services. And that is where we have our web folder, for example. So now everything is partitioned to the right crate, and they follow the same kind of pattern of prefix. So that is a way that I found that that scales pretty well. And this kind of organization, as you mature your code in a production code, you will evolve them. So it's not about getting them right from the start. It's about knowing what could be updated and upgraded as you code along, and to not get emotionally attached to what approach we had in the past. Okay, so let's get back to our scheme zero one. And so the point here was to get the config from the auth, and that is away. And then we have this clean function. 
And that allows us later in our test to just test this hash in a way, rather to test the scheme. We just go to the function here, to this one, and then we have our own keys. So now we have the full control of what we're going to get back and we can check exactly what we're expecting, regardless of what is in the config and so on. So that is a way that I like to structure the code. Okay, so that was scheme one. So that is relatively simple, is what we had before. Now, if we press save, everything compares. So now we're going to go back to our mode of scheme, and that is where we need to be able to return the right scheme for the right ID in a way. So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to have a function, and we're going to put it after this two, and that will be our pub fn get scheme. So that will get the scheme, one of the scheme, right now we have only one, but we're going to do with one. And we're going to give our scheme name, that would be a str, and that will return a result of box, because that is a trait object now, so that we're going to start with a dynamic dispatch, and then we're going to do static dispatch with a new dispatch, so it's going to be very cool. Right now we're going to do din of scheme. So what we're saying is that this method will return a result of a box of a trait object that implements the scheme trait. And then we're going to do a match on the scheme name. And then we're going to say, if it's zero one, we're going to return OK of box new. And that is where we have our scheme zero one, scheme zero one. So here I kind of duplicated the name a little bit just to make sure you can find another strategy, it doesn't matter. And then, because that needs to be exhaustive, if we don't have one, then we're going to return an error, and that would be scheme not found, scheme name to string. Okay, so if we press save, that should compile, which is 90% of the way. So what we did here again is we're using dynamic dispatch because we have our DIN scheme, so it has to be in the box, and then we are creating it here with our scheme one. Now the cool thing is we can go back to our mode of the password, we're going to close that, and we're going to go to our private sections. So here we have the public hash and validate that we're going to implement later, but right now we're going to implement a function which will be, can be private, to this module, it will be the hash for scheme. We'll have the scheme name, and then it will have the two hash. That is what it will take. That will return a result of string. We don't have to make it more complicated. And the first things we are going to do is we are going to get our scheme with the method that we implemented just right now. That is get scheme, and that will be with our scheme name and a question mark. And then we'll have the let pw row, so meaning the or hashed, and that will be scheme hash and our two hash. And that will return a string. So our get scheme, we got our box here, which deref to scheme. So then we can call the scheme like that. And then we're going to do a OK, and we're going, we don't forget to format. And we're going to put our scheme name like that, and then a PWD, PWD hashed. Press save. Now we have the question mark here that doesn't work. Now we have the question mark, which complains, and that is because our PW error doesn't wrap the scheme error. So we're going to go to our PW error, and the way that I actually like to do it is implementing the from, from the derive more, which sometimes doesn't show, so we're going to do a use derive more from, and it doesn't show because we don't have it here. So we're going to add it, like that, that would be from, and then we can put more features here. You have to make sure to put the features, otherwise it doesn't work. So now that we have that, that works, this one works, and now what we can do, we're going to do a section for modules, and then we're going to do from, and that will be the scheme error. So, and then I'm going to import the scheme. 
and then it complains here because that's serialized that it doesn't implement serialize and that is because in my error and it doesn't implement serialize so the strategy again is many of this error will be in the request log line so they need to be new line json so that's why we are using the json serialization so you make sure that everything can serialize nicely so now if we go back to our module code everything should compile nicely so that is pretty cool and in fact if we wanted to be we could just do something like that and then press save and that would be exactly the same now we can do our validate for scheme so the validate for scheme is very similar we're going to call it validate for scheme it's going to return the result of void it will take the scheme name the two hash content and then the password as a string so it's going to be very simple first we get the scheme and then we validate and if everything is fine we return OK. So now the thing that we need to do is to parse the password to make sure that we can get the scheme and the hash part. So for that, our strategy is going to just create a simple struct. So we're going to call it PW parts. And that the first one will be the scheme only. So for example, that will be the zero one without the, the pound sign. So we're going to have a scheme name and that will be our string and then the second one is going to be the hashed password and we're going to call it uh, hashed okay and now we're going to implement parser and we're just going to implement actually the the standard one from the standard library for pw parts and so the way that this one works if we do a, a quick one like that we have a type error, so that would be our error. And now we're going to do the implementation. So there's two things we're going to do. First is this long one can be simplified by result with self. And that is because our convention is that now result is a type alias of our error. So everything is working nice. And then this one, we're going to want to rename it something like password with scheme to make sure we know what we're talking about. Now, one cool crate we're going to use is this little lib, lazy regex, which is based on regex, but allows to pre-compile the regex and also have pretty cool macros. So, so the way it works, and I'm going to do my DD. That is just a temporary variable to see the types. And that is a macro. Make sure to import it. So that will be our lazy regex. And what that does, if we toggle the type, is that it will return us an option of the polls. And the way this smart macro does is analyze somehow the regex and then give us exactly what the number of groups. So the first one is for the whole thing. And then we have this group and then this group. So now it becomes very trivial because what we can do is we just do a map. We don't care about the whole. And that will be our scheme, our hashed. And that could be just a self. And now we're going to, and our scheme name will be our scheme to string, and our hashed will be our hashed to string. So now what we have is an option of PWD parts. So we want to return the result of self. So what we're going to do is a OK or, and we're going to have an error, and we will create a password with, with scheme failed parse name is a little bit weird we can fix it later the most important is go to your error sometime i put the error on the right side over there such as i can do it quickly and i'm going to take that and i'm going to put it there press save then it's good then i close this guy and now if we toggle our types we have a result of pw parts which is what we want so we can remove this that now to do and then boom press save everything compiles and we're very clean that's it so we have that done so that will just allow us to call the parse on any string so now we are ready to put that together so if we go back up we're going to go to our public function and now we can do that so the first one is when we hash a password we want to hash it with a default scheme so so one thing that we're going to do first is going back to our mode 
and here we're going to just create a pub const default scheme and that will be a str and we're going to have for now zero one then later when we're going to do the argon two the default will be zero two but right now we can make everything works with zero one so we put that in scheme and then we go back to our mode and now it's going to be very simple so it's going to be the hash for scheme the scheme name will be our default and then two hash will be this one and then press save and everything should compile and then as a bonus if we turn on our things now we have our little hash over there so again that is a cool things we keep it running you can stop it and then run it again but we have it there so it's pretty nice okay so let's do the validate now and so for the validate we're going to have a two-step approach first we're going to change the result which now would be a scheme status that is a scheme status that we created in our scheme file because that is what we're going to return now and then we're going to do our two-step so first we need to parse the password to know which scheme it is and the password is our password ref or sometimes i call it password hash as well so the password ref we're going to do let pw parts we can just do something like that parse question mark and then here we have our scheme name and hashed we're going to put a to do here such as we don't get too many errors and now it means that those two are the string so now we can work so the first thing that we can do is validate for scheme we give our scheme name our to hash and our hashed and these two are actually references and then we do a question mark at the end so that is the nice thing once you have the error set up correctly like we do you can do a lot of code like that sometimes you want to do a map error because you don't need to send back too much information but in these cases works very nicely and then we are just going to do if scheme name is our default scheme then we're going to have okay scheme status okay and otherwise we're going to return okay scheme status undated now we remove the to do at the end we don't forget the two equal and then that's it so that will return the scheme status here so we do not have access to the database in these crates it's very important yeah so we cannot update anything or whatever we can just validate and send back the information the status such as other modules can do their job and again the cool thing is we can bring up the terminal and then now we have our okay over there so it's starting to look pretty good so now we're not going to write the unit test yet fully because we need to have two scheme to do something interesting so we're going to keep it like that for now and then we come back at the end okay we can turn it off for now okay so now here's a rare cool thing we're going to go back to our lib .rs, where we have the pwd legacy and that is what we just did but this one is not wired this one is the one wired so what we're going to do is command shift f to do a full name replace it's going to be a little bit scary but it's going to be super cool and that is a nice little trick pwd legacy and because this underscore legacy is kind of unique in our code anyway it's not going to conflict with other things now we want to make sure that we do not touch lib us because otherwise it will create a mess because we don't want to do that there so for that we can do exclude and we're going to exclude the lib us folder so this way we don't have the lib auth, but we have this is a lib core lib core and then we have the service over there so now that we are here we can do command option enter and then we're going to replace everything boom it's kind of scary and then command shift e and that will go back to explorer and we don't have any compile errors it's kind of too good to be true we're going to do like that press save everything still compile we still don't believe it that still work if we stop it and we're going to do a cargo test before that make sure that in the readme i have it running right now but make sure that in the readme we have this running 
or a Postgres database running on the default port with a welcome for the Postgres root user. So that is the way our code works. And now if we do a cargo test, everything is working pretty nicely. So we still don't believe it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a cargo run dash p web server that we start our web server. And now in another terminal side by side, we can do a cargo run dash p web server inside our web server. We can close this for now. And inside our web server, we have our examples and our quick dev. So this one is the one that does a login and everything is just a quick dev. So that is what we're going to do. Dash dash example, quick dev. Press enter. And it's amazing. We get our result. Does so this mean that the login pass and everything pass? So that's it. So that is pretty cool. So we have done the thing. So you can commit it. Place probably to commit, even if you git amen later. And then what we can do is our last cleanup. It's going to go to lib. We can remove that and we can remove that. Bye bye. And then that's it. So that's why the little trick is nice because we did our PWD from scratch in a way, but still within the context of the production code. So we have the config and everything. And then we just plug it back in into all our code. So if we were going to look at the service web server, the login now used PWD and so on. So it's pretty neat. Okay, so now we are ready for our next chapter, and that is going to be our scheme 2, which is going to be for Argon 2. So first, we are going to check our cargo2ml for our lib auth, and we are going to make sure that we have this one, the Argon 2, version 05 or the latest, and then the feature STD. And then, for me, I like to do this section here where I'm saying for what I'm using what, so like this, I know what's going on. So once you have that, we are going to go back to our PWD, go to scheme, and then we're going to go to our mode. And over there, we're going to create our mode scheme 02. Very simple. That will be a single file. That is enough. And now we can get into it. So one part we know we're going to use is our error and result from the scheme. And then the rest will be added automatically. We're going to have our pub struct scheme 02 to follow the pattern. And then we're going to implement our scheme for scheme 02. We import the scheme. We're going to close that. And then, so that is what we need to implement. Now, the first things we need for Argon2 is to get an Argon2 object. And the cool thing is that can be reused across many hashing. So we're going to use a once lock. So get argon2, and that will return a static. And static here means that it wasn't necessarily created at the beginning, but from the time you return it, it will stay until the end of the program. And then we do our argon2, and then we're doing a static. And now we're going to have a static instance so that is my pattern that I like. I do the once lock, argon2, static, once lock, new. And thanks, we're going to import our once lock. So that is from standard, it's new in Rust 172, I think, argon2, and then that's it, that compiles. And then I do it like that, I do a med var instance get or init, and now we're going to create our argon2. And so we're going to do the key first. So we just need to get the key only once over there. So it's going to be a auth config pwd key. And now we can create our argon2 new with secret. There's many ways of creating it. You can use whatever you feel more comfortable with. So the unwrap here, I don't really like it. Um, we need to find a way probably to call it at init, because if it fails, we want to fail it very early. We don't want to fail it at the first login. So that is something that we are going to do, to do is to fail early. So again, if the argon doesn't work, we cannot really log in, but we need to think about our strategy of how we want to handle that. So right now we're just going to do a to do for now. And then we're going to give our key that we just got above. And then, without going too much into the details, this is the thing that I found that works pretty well. 
So if we press save, we'll make sure to import our config. So again, the best practice here is to have the config pair lib crates when it's appropriate, and then to prefix it with the name of the crate. And so this way we have auth config and we know that that is the config from the auth subcrate. And all of that come from the same place, which is the environment variable. We're just partitioning it into the appropriate crates. And that is argon stuff. And again, there's different ways here. I like to have my own specific ways, such as everything is, is fixed, but i have still used parent default in a way. So you can have different strategies. It doesn't really matter. But this is something you can fine tune later. So now we have the argon tool. And so we can go back to our implementation. So first we get our argon tool that we had down there. Then the way it works with argon tool is we're going to encode our salt with salt string encode base64. And then we're going to have our argon tool where we do the hashing, we get the content as bytes, we give our salt, base64, and then we're mapping the error. And then we do a two string, and now we can return it. So that is pretty good. We might have some imports to do. So this one is from argon2, and that is probably a trait. And so we want to either import it as this or as underscore, because since we're not using the trait, password hasher, we're just using it to import an implementation, we could do that as well. So that is a nice thing on the import, is make it clear that we're using it just to import some method. So we're going to pick this one. And then that's it. So that works pretty nicely. And that we do the hashing. Now we can do the validate. So for the validate, first I'm realizing that this is not F, is ref. And that is probably a mistake that I had in the trait. So let me fix it because it's kind of bothering me. Then we go back here. And now this one is going to be relatively easy. But there is going to be a little note here. First, we get our argon2. And then the way it works is we parse the password with the argon2 parser because it stores sort and everything there. And then we do the argon2 with a verified password. And then we give the raw content that we have and then the reference that we have. And then we map the error to one of our own error. And that's it. So now we're going to have to import that, which is from Argon, and this one, which is our password verifier, and we're going to use the same as underscore pattern. It's nice that VS Code offers that now. Press save, and everything works. Now, there is something which is very important here, and it's a little asymmetry with the scheme one. And that is, when we validate our password, we don't re-encode it. So the way that Argon works is that in the password, and we'll see that later, it stores everything. All of the configuration to hash the password is stored within the string, which is the salt, the version of the hasher, and all of these kind of things. So now, when we are validating, it works. Everything works nicely. But when we validate, we do the parsing first, so that will return a password hash from Argon2, and then it will validate our clear content. But as we see, we are not giving the sort anymore. We are just giving the content. And then we are giving the parse hash ref. So we are not giving the sort anymore. So everything is working fine and it's very secure, and that is a way that Argon2 works. But now there's a little asymmetry with our scheme one, Whereas if we change the user password sort, the validation will not work anymore on the previous password for the scheme one. But for scheme two, if we change in the database, the user password sort, it will still work because now everything has been stored into our PWD ref. So it has all the information it needs to be able to do the validation and everything. So that is a little asymmetry. We could rehash it to do the lowest common denominators between all of the schemes, that would be fine if we really want to be symmetrical on this kind of behaviors. So I will add a little note here in the code, but that I just wanted to say that. And now that we have that, we can have some fun, and yes, it's some fun, by writing a very small test. So we're going to do our test like that, and the name will be 
test scheme 02 hash into b64u okay so obviously you can have different names and obviously let's do dash like that okay so let's go to this function so here we're going to do actually the rel test so first we're going to do the setup and fixtures so that is our content to hash we give a uuid whatever it is it doesn't matter then that is the thing that we already run before and so we know that the result should equate to that for the argon2 that we have in the config if we really want it to be independent we will split out the function the hash function into its own hash function that will take a reference of argon2 and then we'll have a fixed argon2 for our testing that will be fine as well but the good news is now we can have our full argon2 over there and then we're going to do the execution of the test scheme 2 we're going to hash our fx to hash that will return a string and then we're going to check the result with the fixture result which we know it should be that and then that's it so now we need to obviously import that we're going to import the content to hash and now we're going to see that i've done a little mistake but it's going to be good cargo test dash p lib auth and then we're just going to take this guy put it there and then boom we have a fail here because on 57 we have a not implemented which probably makes sense so if we go down 57 it's over there 57 yeah we just need to return the var and since it's so simple we can probably do that as well that will compile and now if we go back here and we do our cargo test everything is running fine so it's pretty good okay so now obviously we haven't wired this in so the only thing that we need to do is go back to our mod where we do our get scheme and now we're going to add a new line for this one and that will be 02. so now we have these two schemes now we're going to update our default scheme to 02 and then we're going to go to our terminal and if we do a cargo test everything should work very nicely hopefully that's good and then we could do a cargo run dash p web server that will run our web server and then in another terminal we can do a cargo run dash p web server example quick dev so that really makes sure that the whole thing works and if you get any result means that it works pretty nicely okay so we have that working pretty nicely now and if we check the database so if you go to the readme i have a cool one here so when you start the docker like that there's a cool command that you can do like this and i already have the database running otherwise nothing will be working and now if i go to my terminal i can do this i am back in pcql i'm going to connect to my app db and now we can do a select and we're going to do just id and pwd from user and then we have our skin 2 for our first user that we created and then we have a thing and so we created in the dev tools in the core so that is where everything kind of get created right now but because we are using you know the default hashing and everything in the scheme and everything has been wired then everything is working pretty nicely so now the only thing that we need to do is add the update so that is really the key value if the user password has been hashed with 01 that the next time he logins because that is the only time when we have the password in clear we're going to auto upgrade it to 02 but that is a goal so before updating our web layer what we're going to do is update update our pwd test that we have over there the multi-scheme one and here is going to be super simple but pretty cool so what we're going to do is rather to hash our fixture to hash we're going to hash it for scheme so that is so that is a private function that we have so now we can do a hash for scheme and that will give us a string but now it's kind of put it 
for the scheme zero one. And then the cool thing is the way that modules works again is the hash for scheme is part of the PWD module, but is a private one. But because our test is a child module of PWD mod data rest, and children can always see everything that parents has. So that is why we have access to it, but nobody else in other libs or whatever can have access to it. So that is perfect. And then we're going to actually remove our prints and we're going to do the real check now. So then we do the validate password, the same one. So that is a public function and that will return a scheme status. So in this test, what we want to check is to make sure that the scheme status is outdated. So for that, we are just going to do a check. So in our check section, an assert, and we are going to use the macro matches, which is going to match the PWD validate, which is our status, with scheme status outdated. And then because we use an assert, we're going to give some context, such as if it fails, we know what's going on, and we don't forget the semicolon. And then that's it. So now the cool thing about that is, again, we hash the password for the scheme one, and then we validate because we know that our default scheme is two, then it should return a scheme status outdated. And now we're going to pop up our terminal, and we're going to do a cargo test dash p lib auth, and then we're just going to test this one. And then we don't do the dash 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 no capture because we have the real test now, and then everything passes. So we're all good. And now we are ready to update our web layer to seamlessly upgrade the user password hashing. So, so now we can close that. And if we go to our services, our web server, we're going to go to source, and then we have our route logins over there. So now if we go to our login, and it's this one, so we get our states, which is a model manager, because that we need to write to the database. And then we have our cookies for the authentication and the JSON payload, which has the username and the password in clear from the user, obviously. So now that we have that, we can see that we're extracting the password in clear, the username, we're getting the user for logging information, and then we validate the password. And then to validate the password, we're getting it, and then we're calling our PWD validate. So that is where the magic is going to happen. So what we want here is to capture the status. So that will be our let scheme status. And so that is we're getting the scheme status back. And when we get that back, before we set the token and everything, we're going to do a update password scheme if needed. And so we're going to do a if let Scheme status, we're going to update it from our scheme status. Then we're going to have a debug just to say that the password needs to be updated. We could capture the user ID here or print the user ID, but it doesn't really matter at this point. And then we're going to do the user BMC update password. And for that user ID, we're going to give the password in clear. And if we go and look into this function, we're going to see that this is just calling the hash password. So that's what it works. Press save. Now the scheme status might not be public over there. And if we go back to our lib, we want to make sure that our PWD on top, we're going to re-export scheme status. So we're going to do pub use scheme scheme status. So obviously we don't want to have it twice. So from an organizational standpoint, I like to have my scheme status within the scheme sub module. But from an outside world, outside of the lib auth, it's just a lib auth PWD artifacts. So that is what I'm using. So now if we go back to our logging, we should be able to import this one. And then everything should be working fine. So we can bring our terminal. We do a cargo test. We're going to test everything. Everything seems to pass. And then we're going to do a cargo run dash p web server that will run our web server. And then in the other terminal, 
we're going to do a cargo run dash p web server dash dash example quick dev run it and then everything works fine so obviously that is using the scheme 2 now because by default it's going to be encrypted with scheme 2 we could also test that the login does the upgrade so that is something that can be done a little bit more work because now you will need to make sure that you expose the hash for scheme but you don't want to make that public either so that is something that we can do in the future but now we have a very solid code that auto upgrade our password scheme as we go along so when your security team is going to come back and ask a new argon3 or whatever then you will have all the infrastructure to do that in a very seamless fashion for the users Okay, so now for the last chapter of this episode, we're going to do something pretty cool. And that is, we're going to turn our dynamic dispatch that we had for the scheme. So if we go to PWD, scheme, and the mod.rs, we can see that our get scheme functions returns a result of a box of a type that implement the scheme trait. That is called dynamic dispatch. So what we have is a box which is a pointer that contains a type that implements the scheme. And the schemes needs to be a trait object trait, which is what we have. That works perfectly fine. It's actually very performant as well, but we can do a little bit better because in this case, we know that we are going to have a handful of schemes. Schemes is not a thing that proliferate a lot. You are probably going to update once a year or once every three years. So it's always going to be a handful. So it's a perfect candidate to do a static dispatch. So first we're going to move that type on top over there, because this way we have everything close together. It's going to make more sense. So now we can go down and just focus on that part. And so the static dispatch principle is very simple. So typically what you will do is you will implement an enum. We're going to call it scheme dispatcher, and we're going to have variants that we hold those types. So you have a scheme one, and then we'll have our scheme two. So far, so good. And then what we're going to do is we're going to implement scheme for scheme dispatcher. And then we'll implement our variants here, which is these two guys. And then those will be a match on the variant and we'll call the right one. So it's a little bit more boilerplate code in a way, but then everything is fixed. And then result to return a box, you could return the scheme dispatcher, that will work fine. Or if you don't want to bleed the scheme dispatcher type outside, such as we can keep it only for the module, what we can do is implement scheme. And then within that, we wouldn't do the box anymore. We'll do that one and we'll change the box to something like that. And that's it. So that will turn the thing in starting dispatch here. I did not implement that because I want everything in the screen. But there's a cool little crate and it's actually an awesome one. And we're going to add that into our dependencies for the lib auth. And the crate is enum dispatch. So the enum dispatch crate will, will create the boilerplate code for us. So in short, we're not going to need to do that. And what we're going to do is for our trait scheme, we are going to annotate it with enum dispatch from enum dispatch. So that will make that the enum dispatch trait. And they have some proc macro caching that then allows to do enum dispatch. And then on this one, we're going to put scheme. So that will link these two together. Okay. So that is where they have been smart in their proc macro. Now, if I press save, we just have two errors and everything else compares nicely. And the two errors are very trivial, is where we are using our hash. We basically do not have the import scheme in scope. So we're going to do import import scheme, press save. So just like that, we want from a dynamic dispatch to a static dispatch. Very neat and very efficient. So now before the commit, we go there, we make sure we command this one out, press save, make sure that everything is clean. And then that will be it for this episode. We just implemented a full multi-scheme password hashing and with static dispatch.
Hope you like this episode. Like and subscribe helps a lot. Big thanks to all my patrons. Any help is big help. I'm trying to focus on production coding for Rust. Big thanks to Crab Nebula for their sponsorship. Until next one, happy coding.